Welcome new trailblazers, or old trailblazers. Well, this video won't serve much purpose uh, to those seasonal veterans, um, but perhaps you can show this to your friends who just landed in Star Row and is having trouble understanding the game, which I will be here to help. Let's not waste any time, and here are the top 5 things I wish I knew as a beginner starting in Honkai Star Row. These concepts are a little bit more in depth and could be complicated depending on your knowledge based on the game. If this is your first Star Row video, I would recommend you browse some truly beginner guides before coming back, just to get the, like, the very beginner basics down. Um, now that's out of the way, let's get into thing number one. Now, if you play Genshin Impact before, the team building is very similar, except that Genshin is uh, more versatile due to the fact that they have more characters, but it's very easy to build a team with Star Typically a DPS, healer, buffer, debuffer, and a fill. Uh, and this would be considered a hypercrate team. It basically means that you are focusing all of your resources on one DPS that's going to do all the damage for your team. This is my DPS, Kafka. The rest of the characters are basically supporting this one character. This type of team comp works for 100% of the DPS characters currently. Number 2. Invest in your supports later. Once you have optimized your DPS as much as you can at your current level, which I will explain more on how to, don't be afraid to invest in supports. If you're not a Giga Whale, you won't have all the characters, which means most of the time, your team stays the same, but only your DPS changes based on what the enemy is weak to. For example, my team consists of Kafka, Rame, Pela and Lynx. If the enemy is weak to ice, Kafka won't do much since she is Electro. So then I can just swap her out for someone like Jinlu, which is also another DPS, and she has the ice element. This team works the same. This is the same principle, the same is the same hyper carry team. I just swapped one DPS out. There will be synergies with characters who do better with each other, but this is just a general rule of thumb. Here I'm gonna provide you with a list of non-limited supports characters that you can pull pretty much at any time which means you can pull them from limited character banners, standard banners, weapon banners. If you do happen to pull them, they will be pretty much a universal support that works for most of the team. It will be listing the character and a very brief description of what you do. Starting off with Branya, makes your DPS get an additional turn, damage buffs. Pela, AoE defense strat, dispel enemy buffs. Tinyu, damage buff, ultimate regeneration. Haya, energy regeneration, damage buff. Japard, humongous shield. Bailu, healing, revives. Lynx, healing, cleanses. There are two honorable mentions, the first being Natasha. Healing, cleanses. She is great for early game, however, I would give up on building her once you get a better healer or shielding character, since she's just a bad version of every support. Unfortunately, I really like her, but I'm sorry Natasha. And the second being March 7th, shields, cleanses. Increased aggro for shield characters. Also, a very small chance to freeze enemies. Now, she is S tier for clarity. However, outside of that, she's not very good. Reason being, you need skill points for shield. If the shield is broken right away after it's applied, you have to apply it again. So, it's not the most efficient use of your skill points. And another reason being, she cannot solo sustain a team. So, you need another uh, healing or shielding character, which uh, any other character that I listed before can pretty much solo sustain the whole team. So, you don't really need March. Thing number three, upgrade prioritized traces. Another mistake that I see everyone do is leveling up everything in traces, which baffles my mind, and they don't even know what they do, okay? The materials do take a little while to get, especially in the early games, and all of these misused materials add up. For example, if you're using a DPS character such as Kafka, like most if not all the DPS, you will never need to basic attack, so therefore, you don't level up basic attack. Here, you can click on it and then see on the top right, basic attack, Talents, Ultimate, Technique, and Skill. And each of these branches are basically an extension uh, or upgrade. I will say these bigger circles are more of an upgrade, and then these are basically just overall upgrades for your characters. Like, again, I've never upgraded my basic attack for Kafka because I'm not going to be basic attacking, so I will be wasting materials. Her main damage source comes from her ultimate and her skill, so I would prioritize these two. However, most of the time, you still want to be getting all of these bigger white circles. There are exceptions, uh, such as Stuck the Ratio being one of the newer characters that's actually free, and he's actually one of the best DPS right now. His main damage comes from his talent, actually. So you want to do some research beforehand to see what your character wants in traces, so you can focus on that. The same thing applies to supports. You want to figure out what they are contributing to the team and level up that ability. For example, the purpose of my payload 
Kayla is mainly to use her ultimate to defense shred my enemies. So I can focus on leveling up her ultimate and the rest I don't really invest into since I don't really need these. So I can just focus on leveling up her ultimate because this is the main reason why I want a Kayla on my team. Now I did put a few skill points into talents because that helps with her ultimate regeneration. Take a look at my Bailu. Her traces are actually not that leveled up. I've only put 8 points into her skill. If you don't know what it does, this basically heals 3 ticks of healing. Her ultimate group healing, but at my current level, I am Trailblaze level 66. This is more than enough for my Bailu to keep my team alive and happy. <laughs> and so, I didn't really put skill points into other things, so I can focus on building other characters and then come back on this later on. I just want to say these materials are really expensive to get, even into later stages. I, I'm pretty, I'm still pretty conservative about what I'm leveling up. Now, thing number four is really, really important. If you can get this down, it will really uh, help you get a jump start in your account. If you play anything like Genshin before, relics are basically artifacts. However, if you notice at the top, uh, there are two different sets for the helmet, gloves, body, and boots. You can farm the four sets together. However, for these two on the right, uh, you have to farm in a separate place for the two sets. For the helmet, gloves, body, and boots. This is where you find for them, Cavern of Corrosion. As you can see, these are all the set with their bonuses. And for the planet spears and ropes, over here is where you find for them in the simulator universe. And they also have two piece bonuses. So what the set effects means that if you have two piece or four piece of the same set, you will get bonus effects. Now for the rarity, there are five stars, four stars, and three stars. Now, depending on your level, you may not get five stars right away. You might not even get four stars right away. You'll probably get a lot of three stars, uh, four stars here and there. And as you level up, you will get higher chances of getting five stars. Let's say you want to farm Path of Drifting. You're going to see numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, this is the corresponding world level, aka equilibrium level. I'm going to pull up a chart on the screen right now. So for level 20, this is EQ1, level 30, EQ2, 40, 3, 54, 65, 65, 6. So that means the higher level you are, the higher chance of you getting a better relic is. For example, Equilibrium 1, you don't even see 5 stars until you hit Equilibrium 3, which is level 40. And this is just a very small chance of getting 5 stars, and the chance of it gets higher as you level up. Also, if you have fuels, which are these, they give you Trailblaze power, but they are pretty limited, so if you want to be very efficient with your fuel, I will save them to farm until you are level 65 for max efficiency. Before level 40 or Equilibrium 3, what I would do is do some research on what your main DPS needs uh, relic-wise. I would start farming for 4-star relics through the help of friends. What I mean by that is when I hit challenge, you'll see on the right, support. Click on that. You're able to recruit the help of one person, whether that be a friend or a stranger. You can click on add and there is your DPS. Especially when they are like level 80 fighting an equal element 2 world, it's going to be a walk in the park for them. So what you're basically farming for is the body and the boots. Most of the time for your DPS, speed boots is the way to go. But you still want to do a research on your character on what body they need. It can vary characters to characters. But for helmets, it is a stable HP main stat as well as the glove. It is a stable attack. They're not going to change. Do not worry about the substats right now. You can worry about them later. The main thing you're looking for is the two-piece effect or the four-piece uh, effect. After you do that for your main DPS, move on to supports. Again, figure out what main stat they need, what for like set they need. Basically farm for the basic minimums. You don't have to worry about leveling up gloves for your supports since they won't be doing damage anyway. So after you have your relic situation sorted out, I would go for simulator universe then. The reason I would do simulator universe afterwards is because you cannot request help in this world. Again, you want to do a quick uh, research on what relics your uh, supports or DPS wants. And when you farm in the simulator universe, it's pretty different from the other four piece relics because simulator universe gives you buffs. Okay, so if I start, get my characters ready, you can see beforehand what they are weak to. I click on launch. And here is where most of the people get confused. They're like, what is this? Okay. So as you fight enemies, every time you defeat them, you will get buffs. And you want the buffs to benefit what your main DPS is. And this is where paths come in. So whatever path you click on, you are more likely to get that buff. You can still get other buffs like preservation, remembrance, nihility, but you are more likely to get the buff that 
you select your path with. So to break it down, I will only explain the ones that you'll probably click on and when you need them basically so preservation basically it's the fire mc team you can just pretty much search on youtube fire mc team it's it's actually pretty beginner friendly and uh free to play remembrance do not worry nihility dots dps if you don't know what dots means that means you don't have to choose this abundance don't worry hunts this is where most of you are going to click on the hunt basically translates to buffs for your DPS. So this is where you're mainly gonna click on. Destruction, do not worry. Elysian, uh, follow-up attacks. If you don't know what they mean, don't click on it. <laughs> and to break it down even further, let me let me start to show you an example. So I chose Nihility because my team is a DOS DPS team. So for this one, I just do one to two star blessing. So blessings are the buffs. So on the bottom, you can see destruction, remembrance, abundance. So uh, I don't see the one that one here, which is Nihility. So I reroll. Can I see Nihility right here? Most of the time, just click on your path. Nothing's gonna go wrong with that. Okay, I'm gonna get in combat and then I'll finish this. Once again, you see the buffs. Nihility, Nihility, Nihility. I just choose whichever one that looks the best. Confirm. You don't have to worry about it. Reset because I don't see any. Uh, and then right here is I don't see a path that I want. Uh, so I just read it. Increase crit rate by 11%. For Dots team, crit rate is not beneficial. So uh, just choose whatever one that kind of benefits you. Uh, and that's basically how you want to go through the stages. You're going to be stuck there farming the two piece relics for a while. The next time you farm for the four piece relics is when you are satisfied with your planet orbs and ropes, which are these. And you understand what main stats and sub stats you would need for your five star four piece relics, which are these. I do have a side note here. The battle pass is really worth it under two circumstances. A, if you complete at least level 50, ideally it'll be 70 for all of the rewards. And B, you are interested in this game enough that if you like, you're going to be playing for a while. This helps a ton with uh, leveling up materials and for characters and weapons, especially when you're early on in the game. And for your fifth and final point, should I pull for weapons or characters? I would pull for characters because it will provide you with a better experience far more than pulling light guns. Star Rail is generous enough to have many free to play light cones at our disposal, not to mention the free event light cones they give out from time to time. So you have many options when it comes to light cones. However, getting a new characters enables you to have more team comps and playstyles to spice up your Hoyo gameplay. Think of it as would you rather get a better steering wheel for your car to make your current car drive? and feel better or would you rather get a whole new car where you have a different driving experience and have the options to switch from car a to car b weapons chances are 75 25 which means 75 percent of the time you do get your weapon which is a very generous mechanic but yeah i would favor characters more than light cones however if you do really like a character i say go for their light cone doesn't doesn't really hurt right what's the worst that can happen and that's gonna wrap it up. This is the top five things I wish I knew as a beginner in Honkai Star Row. Um, I hope I've provided some guidance for anyone that's having trouble. If you have any questions, link them in the comments. I will answer them for you as much as I can. Um, and yeah, I hope you have a great and fantastic, fantastic, fantastic rest of your day.